On September 23, 2011, the Opera experiment made an announcement that shocked the world, the detection of a particle moving faster than light. And this result challenges all previous knowledge of physics, including Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. The Opera experiment involved neutrinos, which are ultralight particles that barely interact with matter. The fastest neutrinos ever produced were made in a particle accelerator at the CERN laboratory on the border between Switzerland and France. And these neutrinos were shot towards the Gran Sasso mountain in Italy, which is 732 kilometers away from CERN, where the opera experiment was set up. Along with neutrinos, a radio signal was sent at the same time to alert the experiment in Italy that CERN neutrinos were en route. The experiment then received the radio signal and immediately detected neutrinos moving at almost the speed of light. Or at least that was the expectation. The results released in September 2011 went against that expectation. The experiment picked up on the neutrinos 60 nanoseconds before the radio signal did. In other words, the neutrinos had arrived before the light. And this outcome is totally mind-blowing. And it's no wonder this outcome got the full attention of the scientific community. Other neutrino detectors on the same mountain tried to reproduce the results of the opera experiment. The opera experiment was turned upside down by a possible error, and theoretical physicists were at the same time exploring the consequences of a particle moving faster than light. The idea of a particle that can move faster than light wasn't exactly new. Fascinatingly, the concept took hold in the 60s and has a unique name, tachyon, which originates from the Old English tachys, meaning fast, swift. Tachyons seem to go against relativity. According to Einstein's relativity, matter cannot move faster than light, and if something moved faster than light, it could go back in time. The result of the opera experiment revived interest in tachyons, and this is where I reveal that the faster-than-light neutrino result was wrong. The mistake here was a poorly connected fiber optic cable, and it was causing a systematic error in the experiment's timing measurements. And before it sounds like the scientists dropped the ball, this is the kind of mistake that messes up all the readings in the same way. So it's impossible to detect this error with statistical analysis alone. It's the worst possible type of error for an experiment. And it only becomes clear when it causes a major screw-up like that. But not every experimental mistake is a bad thing. Because reviving the idea of tachyons wasn't a waste of time. Tachyons may be able to explain some of the open questions in our universe. Like the presence of dark matter, which is a type of invisible matter that makes up 80% of galaxies, or perhaps even help explain the accelerated expansion of the universe and the origin of dark energy, which is the mysterious energy that causes this accelerated expansion. The false positive of the opera experiment might bear actual positive results. And this is where some of you are thinking, but didn't you just say that Einstein's relativity stops particles from moving faster than light? And yeah, you're right, in 99% of the cases, but tachyons are that special 1%. Hey, Pedro here. This video you are watching was originally in Portuguese, my native language. This is the attempt of our team to translate it to English, and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is extremely important to us. Now, back to the video. The idea that relativity forbids movement above the speed of light is a didactic simplification. What happens is, accelerating particles with mass to light speed, which is 299792 kilometers per second, requires infinite energy. And since there's no such thing as infinite energy, speeding up particles to the speed of light or beyond is impossible. But calm down, there is a way for a particle to exceed the speed of light without being accelerated by being created with a speed above that of light without the need to accelerate. It pops up already faster than the speed of light. Actually, that's exactly how light itself moves at the speed of light. Particles of light are always created at the speed of light. They don't accelerate. Tachyons would be created in a similar way. They would always be born at speeds above the speed of light. In other words, tachyons are born with a speed greater than 299792 kilometers per second. And since they don't need to be accelerated to that speed, it doesn't cost infinite energy. The problem is accelerating to the speed of light or more, and not to exist at those speeds. Moreover, it's possible to tweak Einstein's relativity to include speeds faster than the speed of light. So, it's feasible to study tachyon's effects and their role in explaining physics unsolved mysteries like dark matter and dark energy. And yeah, there's the issue with tachyons maybe time traveling, but I'll circle back to that after I've convinced you that tachyons are super cool. The physics of tachyons is quite amusing, or strange, whichever you prefer. Tachyons behave almost mirrored to the normal world, below the speed of light. For instance, for a particle that's moving slower than the speed of light, the faster it goes, the more energy it packs. So basically, you'd need infinite energy to hit the speed of light. Except for tachyons, the opposite is true. 
The faster a tachyon travels, the less energy it possesses. When a tachyon gains energy, it gradually slows down. In other words, it comes closer to the speed of light. It takes infinite energy to slow a tachyon down to the speed of light. So it's impossible to hit the speed of light even for a particle that's faster than light itself. Another odd result of the speed-energy relationship in tachyons is that a tachyon with less energy moves faster. Low-energy tachyons must move tens, hundreds, or thousands of times faster than light. If tachyons exist in nature, most of them are moving so fast that their speed is basically infinite. Heck, tachyons can even escape black holes because they move faster than light. If tachyons exist and carry information, they might just be the key to understanding black holes. Which brings us to the question, if tachyons exist in the universe, can we detect them somehow? The answer is maybe. Tachyons have some unique features that might just give them away to detectors on Earth. The most striking feature is probably that tachyons, generally, seem to be in more than one place at once. And the way to get this is to think about a tachyon, super, super fast, with basically infinite speed. The path this tachyon takes is a straight line. And this line is drawn so fast that any light the tachyon emits along the way is basically emitted all at once. Because of that, more than one tachyon light signal can arrive at the telescope at the same time. A single tachyon generating one or more signals. Another handy fact for spotting tachyons emitting radiation is they should give off radiation kind of like a sonic boom, much like a jet breaking the sound barrier. The tachyon radiation is going to be blasted out in a real distinctive cone pattern. Another way to spot tachyons would be through their gravitational effects. If tachyons have mass, they have a gravitational effect. And this is where we have a technical problem. There are various different tachyon candidates that exhibit distinct gravitational behaviors. The first kind of tachyon, intriguingly, would essentially be regular matter moving at super, super fast speeds. Like those neutrinos faster than light from the OPERA experiment. This kind of tachyon could form gravitationally stable structures, like planets made out of tachyons. Except instead of being spheres, the gravitational structures of tachyons would look like strings. Gravitational structures of tachyons form when tachyons cross paths. Only nearby tachyons affect each other gravitationally. This is because tachyons move faster than gravity. So, tachyons never get perfectly stuck because of gravity. They just keep orbiting around the common center of mass in spirals. And if you put several tachyons together, it forms a kind of rope-like pattern. Even so, these tachyon structures would only form with low-velocity tachyons, which means high-energy tachyons. And high energy inherently means high gravity. Therefore, these tachyon space strings would indeed be high-gravity astronomical objects that don't give off much visible light. Does this ring a bell? dark matter. If tachyons exist and significantly contribute to the universe's gravity, without interacting in other ways with regular matter, they're perfect candidates for dark matter. The burning question is, can you tell apart dark matter made of tachyons from other kinds of dark matter? Right now we don't know, but we still gotta figure out how the gravity from bunches of tachyons would affect the light that passes nearby. If dark matter made of tachyons bent the path of light in a way different from other dark matter theories, then it'd be possible to tell tachyons apart from other theories. The second possible type of tachyon has the opposite effect. If tachyons behave in a way that's opposite to matter when it comes to speed and energy, then maybe tachyons have an opposite behavior when it comes to gravity. So, tachyons may generate a type of anti-gravity, adding a repulsive term to the equation of the universe causing it to expand at an accelerated rate, just as dark energy does. Tachyons may help us explain other mysteries of nature, like dark energy and the accelerated expansion of the universe. Tachyons sound cool. They're actually pretty good candidates for unsolved physics problems. There's just one problem. They might cause time paradoxes. But who hasn't caused one before? And one way to show that is Thoman's antiphone experiment. Let's picture this. Scientists have created a gadget that can send and receive info using tachyons. A lab on Earth shoots a question over to another lab on the moon using tachyons. What's the color of the sky? Then the moon's laboratory responds. At day or at night, also using tachyons. The problem is this. Since tachyons move faster than light, they can go back in time. It's not always so, but it occurs. And if you line up the speed of tachyons and the placement of labs just right, it's possible that the Earth lab gets the answer at day or at night, before it even asks the question about what color the sky is. In other words, the answer arrives before the lab even makes the tachyon phone call to the moon. This is Thoman's antiphone. The lab on Earth is gonna feel the effect of the question, which usually is an answer, without ever having caused it, 
which would be asking the question. This seems to mess with the whole cause and effect idea. Tolman's anti-telephone is the main type of argument against tachyons, and he really makes a good point. Creating a theory that violates cause and effect can bring problems, but it is possible to defend the tachyons from the anti-telephone argument. The first defense is simple. Tachyons may not be used to communicate information. Perhaps information travels at the speed of light at most. In fact, quantum entanglement is a physical phenomenon that, at first glance, seems to violate the speed of light limit, but it is impossible to use this effect to transmit information. And if tachyons exist, then maybe that's the case. The second solution is a more elaborate version of that first defense. We're thinking about tachyons as particles that are perfectly placed in space and time. But that's impossible. Tachyons are gonna play by quantum physics rules, so their spot in space and time can't be pinned down for sure in every situation. Guessing the uncertainties tied to tachyons, it might just be impossible to say for sure if the answer really did show up before my question. And just like that, causality wasn't messed with. The tachyon of the answer is only really spotted if the question is sent out. Another solution is to deny that tachyons travel in time. It's a curious fact of physics that particles traveling to the past are mathematically identical to their antiparticles traveling to the future, because that's normal. Tachyons traveling to the past can be seen as anti-tachyons heading to the future, and that avoids issues with causality. And finally, the boldest solution. Causality doesn't matter. An absolute cause and effect order might just be a trick of the human mind stuck in a world that only moves at less than the speed of light. Exploring cause and effect through relativity with objects exceeding light speed stems from the theory of relativity. On the flip side, it's actually super tough to prove that cause and effect truly have to come from that very same theory. So, if we're really going to trust the mathematics of the theory more than our intuition, cause and effect might not be that important in a universe with tachyons. And it's not just tachyons that point this out. Some new physical theories that attempt to expand our understanding of gravity from quantum physics also abandon the need for cause and effect in exchange for a much broader view of the universe. If tachyons exist, they might actually show us that, in fact, cause and effect aren't as big a deal as we think they are today and help us get an even deeper understanding of our space and time. And that's why I love wacky ideas. Thanks a whole bunch and see you next time.